Hello, I'm James, amateur radio call sign WA7JNJ, here at Lake Sammamish State Park to do the next video in my series focused on those newer to summits on the air or new soda activators. Please check the playlist on the channel for more videos in these series and also watch for some additional ones in the future. The goal for this video is to focus on activating on VHF and UHF frequencies, focusing on some initial tips and setup, radios, filters if needed, and various antennas. Let's get into it. Successfully activating on VHF or UHF will depend on quite a few things, including the height of the summit, where it's located, if the summit's in the trees, uh, depend on the people around listening that are within line of sight of that summit. It helps if you post an alert or a spot to let people know that you're there. If there's interference, the type of radio you're using, your antenna, etc. And so all those things go into a successful activation. One of the first things I'd recommend you do if you're looking to activate a, a summit is to check that summit's webpage and look at the bands that it's been activated on. It'll list all the various bands and you can look and see how often it's been activated on 2 meter um, or 440 or the other VHF, UHF bands. That'll at least give you some insight that it has been activated or not, or if it's mostly been activated on HF. To help you be successful, I'll also recommend posting an alert for the summit that you're gonna be on and a spot if able when you're on the summit. I'll go over that in more detail in a future video regarding spots and alerts, but recommend you post an alert and a spot. This is wa 7 jnj up on Orcas Island, Mount Pickett, looking for a 1.25 meter simplex contact. Anyone listening on the repeater that would like to try? Another setup item before you go on the summit is to add repeaters for the area of the summit that you're gonna be in. I'll usually look for the clubs in that area and add their repeaters on my radio. Having the repeaters on your radio is great for safety, but it's also nice if you're looking for contacts and having a hard time. I'll go to the repeater, ask if anyone's on the repeater and if they can transition over to Simplex and make a contact with me, and that's worked a few times. Knowing the calling frequencies is also important. So 146.52, 446, or 223.5 are some of the main calling frequencies, but also knowing other frequencies that are used in your area. 146.56 is being used more in Washington State, and I know 146.58 is used more heavily in Oregon. So posting a spot and letting people know that you're on those frequencies is always great to get contacts, and then going to the national calling frequency if you need to, or just to let people know you're on another frequency. The two meter band is most often used for local contacts from a summit, but it's also fun to try other bands. I've used 440 or 70 centimeter, 1.25 meter or 220 band. And there's other bands that are fun to use as well. So don't just get stuck in two meter and as you're learning, have fun trying other bands as well. I've used a handful of HTs when activating and the very first lesson that I learned is not to use a Baofeng. I used it for my first activation and realized I could not hear many of the stations that were calling me. I immediately went out and, and bought the Yesu FD70DR, which was a lower cost option that was newer and had digital modes on it as well, and realized very quickly that that hurt a whole lot better, and so I stopped using the Baofeng. So while I have a lot of bow fangs, it's what got me into amateur radio, learning about frequencies. Do not recommend using them for summits on the air. So using a quality radio is an important part of activating VHF, UHF, and it'll give you the most chance of success. A lower cost quality one is good, or getting a super header dyne receiver uh, HT like the Yesu 60, 70, 3DR, 5, etc. They're a little bit more expensive, but you will have a little better receive. Many of my long distance contacts have been made with either the FD70 or the 3DR. Many times stations at distance like that are in the noise and very hard to pick up. And so having that extra receive capability is, is fun and helpful. Should you bring an extra battery with you while you're activating? Some of the radios I have, I don't feel like I would need to, like the Icon V86, the battery lasts forever, and, and the Yesu 65 as well. 
The ASU 70DR, I did buy an extra battery because uh, it does not have great battery life. And the 3DR, I also keep an extra battery with me depending on the radio that I'm using. In reality though, I've only ever needed to use that extra battery uh, twice at the most and it was when I was doing multiple summits. So if you're starting out, don't feel like you have to get an extra battery. A two meter bandpass filter is a tool that you might want to pick up at some point of your journey. I didn't use one for my first three years of, of activating and was able to, to do fine. But it really has helped when you're on a summit that has a lot of towers or interference. And even on summits without towers where I would, you'd think there would not be interference, I've heard no weather stations or had other things happen. So having a two meter bandpass filter to filter out that noise and allow you to make contacts is a great tool to have in your kit, although not something you probably need right away. Moving on to antennas related to interference. If you're on a summit using a Yagi or a higher gain antenna and you're experiencing interference, using a smaller or less effective antenna is one tool that you might want to look at. Before I go into the antennas that I do recommend, I'll start with the ones that I don't. Firstly is the one that came with your radio. Uh, now while on some summits you could use almost any antenna and make contacts, not recommended at least for, for being the most successful in what you're doing. I do upgrade all the antennas on my HTs and generally do not use those on summit. I'll use them when I'm hiking to the summit and there have been a few times I've used to activate, but really wouldn't recommend that as your main antenna that you're gonna use. So moving on to the antennas that I do recommend. The first is an extension whip. The MFJ Long Ranger is the one that is used very often for activating. And I have a couple of those and always have one of them in my pack. There is also a Diamond brand, a Smiley brand, and some other brands that I haven't used as much. But there are other great options. In extension whip, you can be successful using one of those for many summits. The next antenna that I recommend is a Rollup J Pole or a Slim Jim antenna. And N9TAX, Nelson had some antennas for a while that I, I have and use. Ed Fong and or even making your own antenna can be a good option for this category. I always have one in my pack. You can deploy the antenna multiple ways. I've hung it from a tree branch or most often use it with an extension mast and have had success doing that. Generally, I've had more success or heard stations better with a roll-up J-Pole than the MFJ Long Ranger. I think part of that is because it's a little bit higher up in the air when it's on a mast. The best or highest gain antenna that you can use is a directional antenna. And my longest contacts, 150 to almost 300 miles, were made with some sort of a directional, either the Elk Log Periodic or an Aero Yagi. Starting off with the Aero Yegi, I've got a couple of those and I started off using them at first. They're great antennas, a lot of folks use them. They'll either hold them in their hands when they're activating, attach it to a tripod, uh, attach it to their walking stick or different ways. And they'll also upgrade or find ways to lighten the antenna by changing the mass that the, the uh, Aero antennas go on or other things to make it lighter. So the Aero antenna is great especially for two meter, I've also used it for 70 centimeter. I don't see as many activators using the Elk Log Periodic Antenna, but I've really enjoyed using that because it's easy to use both two meter and 440. It's easy to put together. The elements are color coded. It's easy to attach to a tripod and I've found ways to do that on a lightweight tripod. And so I've had great success in that. It is a little bit bulkier than the Arrow and maybe a little bit more weight, but overall that's been a good option as well for me. Thank you for watching this quick overview of activating a summit using VHF or UHF frequencies. If you have any questions, please reach out in the comment section below. Please also check out the series on my channel for newer SOTA activators for other resources and future videos as well. Thank you so much for watching and 73 from WA7 J&J. &J.